Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Kale. I'm a pastor and missionary, and we are getting towards the end of a series of videos, tutorials on how to use the free Bible study program eSword that's available for PC and Mac. And what we have covered over the last several videos is how to use the different free resources inside of eSword, how to use the search function. And so we've covered a lot over the last several videos. If you haven't seen those, I encourage you to check those out because you've missed a lot. And what we're going to see today um, is really just a bonus. Um, I actually don't use this feature personally a lot. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the editor feature of eSword. Now that might sound weird uh, just saying the editor. We're not editing the Bible, obviously. That's just a window and a tool inside of eSword that basically allows us to write and edit text and save it in different ways. And so you could use this editor for several different things. And so we're going to see that today. Let's dive in. All right, so we've got eSword open here on our computer. I've got my Bible in the middle here once again. I've got my dictionaries docked on the side, my Bible book navigation over on the left. I've got my commentaries up on the right, and my editor window is down on the bottom right. Now, in your version of eSword, it might look differently because you can edit this to look however you want. If you can't find the editor panel, you can go up to the top of your eSword window, click on this little button that says E, and it will maximize your editor, which basically now just looks like a large simplified Word document, right? For Microsoft Word, you've got all of your uh, editing tools up here, your fonts, um, font size, all of those things. But for now, I'm going to go back to my other window. I've got it down here on the right side because I like to see if I've got any notes down here. Um, but if I press this little push button, what it'll do is it'll actually dock it up on the left hand side here with my dictionary. So if you don't ever plan on using the editor um, or you don't use it very often, you can put it right here. Or if you like the editor and you want to take up more of the screen with it, you can dock it there. And when you click that tab, it'll stay there like so. And then you can have all this room to type. I don't use it a whole lot, um, but I do like to keep it over here on the bottom right hand side if I need it because I can also copy and paste things over here if I'd like to. Now I did say earlier that I don't use this function a whole lot. I'm usually scribbling on a yellow legal pad when I'm starting my first uh, round with my Bible study for preparing a sermon or I might have like Evernote or some note uh, pad application open on my computer or just even Microsoft Word so I can copy and paste things into there. When I'm finishing a sermon and I'm usually doing it in Microsoft Word, but this is a nice feature. Now, if we take a look down here, let's go ahead and maximize um, the, the editor just so you can see all these features up here. Uh, we have three tabs, so there are three different types of notes that we can do in the editor window. Let's start with study notes. I'm going to unmaximize it here for a second because what I want you to see is this little toolbar here. See how it's got Proverbs 11:15 open? That's because I have Proverbs 11, 11 <laughs> excuse me, 11:15 selected. If I select a different verse, then that changes down here in my editor window. And the reason is because I've got this link button on. If I unlink it and select a different one, it doesn't change and I would have to manually select the new verse, but let's link that up. That way, anytime I select a new verse, it will change. Now, when I'm in my study notes, what I can do here is let's let's say uh, Proverbs 11.15. In a previous video, we looked up the definition for the word smart, and we know that the older definition uh, in a verb form can mean that something is painful, right? Or that there's consequences or judgment. So I'm just going to type my little study note here, smart equals painful. Um, and so if I save that, with by clicking the little save button. Now that is saved under my study notes on Proverbs 11:15. And so if I navigate away and I'm in Luke chapter 16, right? I'm studying Abraham's bosom or something like that. Now see my I've got my study notes up now for Luke 16. Now I don't do a lot of this in here because a lot of my notes are in my Bible uh, margin in my in my physical Bible, but this is really neat because if you're if you decide to read through the Bible in a year one year specifically on your laptop on eSword and take notes in here, you can save notes for every single passage or verse or chapter, which is pretty cool because if I go back now to Proverbs chapter 11, 
and click on verse 15. Look, it even underlined verse 15 here. If I click on verse 15, look over here in my editor window. Under study notes, I've got my notes that I recorded earlier, just like I wrote them virtually in the virtual wide margin of my Bible here in eSword. So that is pretty cool. Now, the next feature we have is just journal notes. I'm going to go ahead and maximize our editor window here. And so we're under the journal notes tab, not the study notes. And you can see now that we've got it saved as a date. Okay. And so when you're in these different tabs, it's going to save it uh, in different ways. And so um, if I, if I type a journal note here, it's just like I'm journaling in a, in a, in a physical journal, right? And then if I click save, it's going to save that under that date. And then I can go back and I can lurk, look at journal entries from different dates in the past. Okay. And so if you like to journal with your devotions in the morning, um, maybe that's an option for you so that you can save your, uh, your journal notes digitally within eSword. Now, the other tab that we have here besides journal notes and study notes is topic notes. Now, this is interesting because you could save, uh, if you're doing any sort of a Bible study, let's say you're doing a study on charity, okay? And then, so charity is going to take you to a wide range of places off the top of my head. Obviously, you're going to have 1 Corinthians 13. And so, you go through 1 Corinthians 13, and let's go ahead and unmaximize this. It stays down here. And let's go ahead and navigate to 1 Corinthians 13. And so we've got now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. And this entire chapter, right, is about, it's the full mention of charity in the Bible. Well, let's go ahead and just highlight verse 13 and copy and paste it into our editor because I want that to be over there, right? And so charity, we've got that there. Now we're kind of tying some of our, uh, our, uh, things together that we've done over the, the last couple of tutorials. Let's go up to our, actually, let's just uh, highlight charity here because we know how to use that feature and right click quick search. If you don't know how to do this, go back and find my video on how to use the search function inside eSword. I'm going to click on search the, let's just search the New Testament here and we're going to see all of the uh, uses. And so uh, we see like this first Timothy one, five, now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. That's a great cross reference. So I'm going to control C, control V, copy paste that one into my notes over here on charity. But the first mention is first Corinthians chapter eight, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. That's a great cross reference too. Let's control C, control V, copy and paste that into our editor down here. So I've got all these cross references, right? I also notice that there's 24 verses uh, that charity is used in and there's 28 total uses. So I could type that down here as well if I wanted to, right? Um, 24 verses use charity. And then I could say 28 times total in the Bible. Okay. And so I've got all these notes on my study of charity over here. So let's go ahead and maximize this again. And okay. So if I want to save this, you know, I, I don't have any topics here. So here's what I'm going to do. I should have did this from the beginning, but we're going to select this and copy it. And what I'm going to do is go over to this little new page here. I'm going to select new topic and I'm going to enter the topic title of charity. Okay hit OK. That brings us up a fresh document with that title, Charity, and I'll just copy and paste. I should have did that at the beginning, but you guys get it. So then if I hit Save here, now I've got Charity as a topic, and I can save it that way. And if I shrink this back down here, I can see Charity as my topic. Now, I could also do this if I was wanting to work on uh, my sermon within eSword, you know? So I, I could, you know, do a new topic and say... Um, 2 Timothy 2.15, make that a topic, right? And then I'm going to go over here to 2 Timothy 2.15. And so then I could copy and paste this into my editor. And then if I wanted to, I could start to do some out, uh, some rough outlining, right? Um, tabbing over and stuff like that. So we'll cover that in a different video, but th that's the idea. And then I could save this and now it's saved under a new topic and I could scroll. So you could, you could do... Uh, sermon editing 
inside of here. I prefer to do it outside of eSword, but it does have that simple note and word function within eSword that allows you to do different things. And the nice thing is it saves it in a way that's easy to find. With journal notes, you're saving by date. With study notes, you're saving by the passage number. And so whenever you come across that verse again, you're going to see your own notes, just like it was your own commentary. And then topic notes is really just going to be topics, Bible studies, sermons, however you want to save it. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful for you seeing how to use the editor feature or the notes feature in eSword. Uh, make sure you join us next time because what we're going to be doing is trying to apply everything we've learned at eSword. And then I'm going to just take a verse and just start to do a rough sermon outline prep and basically see how to study the Bible with eSword. If I was going to start to write a sermon, this is what I would do with eSword to begin to study that passage out. So make sure you join us next time. Thank you for joining me this time. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos come out, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. God bless.